Welcome to part two of this Football Manager 2016 experiment featuring Football Manager Central's Yugoslavian Super League database, which you can download from the link in the description below. So make sure you check out part one if you haven't done so already so you know what this is all about. But essentially what Football Manager Central have done, they've created a Yugoslavian league system, create, uh, merging a number of ex-Yugoslavian countries together to make a league system and also create Yugoslavia as a nation on the game. Now in this part two, I've holidayed through to 2036. Thank you for the 200 likes on part one, that's fantastic. I said if you managed to hit 200 likes, I'd do a part two, so here it is. And we're gonna have a look at how Yugoslavia as a nation have done over the last few years, have a look at the league system, and also have a look at how the Yugoslavian clubs have done in the Champions League and that sort of thing. So as you can see here, they've done rather well in terms of world ranking. They're currently fifth in the world. They've been as high as second in recent years. And interestingly, they managed to win a World Cup. They won the 2026 World Cup, so that's 10 years ago now. They've just been runners up in the Euros as well, Euro 2036. We'll have a look at that in a second. And they've also won the Confederations Cup in 2029. If we just look at their World Cup history though, you, you remember that they didn't do so well in the first World Cup 2018. They didn't actually even qualify for the 2022 World Cup, but then in 2026 when they did qualify, very successful, they managed to defeat Italy in the final. And they've also just been runners up as well in the 2034 World Cup a couple of years ago, losing out to Germany. So they've been very successful in recent years. You can see here 2034 just lost 1-0, bit unlucky really. Obviously all the players will be regens now, they won't be any real life players. So in 2026 they beat Italy 1-0 in the final. You can see their journey, they actually finished second in their group, Group D in 2026. Second round, they defeated Portugal 1-0. Quarter final, they beat Uruguay 1-0. Semi-final, they went through on penalties against Belgium after a 3-3 draw. Every other game was 1-0 for them by the looks of it. So European Championship-wise, they lost in the, the second round in 2016, you'll remember that. And then second round once again, 2020, lost in the second round in 2024 against France. And then they managed to get through to a couple of quarterfinals, losing against Belgium and Germany. And they've just lost the final against England, 1-0. They're a pretty low-scoring team generally by the looks of it. They've got a solid defence and don't score a huge number of goals. So they're a bit unfortunate for them. They, they've won a World Cup though, which is amazing, which is what I'm sure most of you wanted to see. This is the team. All the players are regens now, as you would expect. But you can see the clubs that they're currently playing for. There's some big clubs in there. Bayern, PSG, Juventus, Arsenal, Atletico Madrid, Man United. So there's a real mixture of teams. They've got some quality players. If you just have a look at the most capped player at the moment it's this guy Milan Stokic 34 year old defensive midfielder and then another guy's got 100 caps the captain not the captain the goalkeeper Hazanovic 33 years old now plays for Sporting and the top goal scorer 60 goals in 87 games is Ivan Knez who plays for Bayern Munich wow what a striker if we just use the in-game minute to have a look at his current ability 154 potential 190 uh, he's 34 though, so he's obviously on the decline now. So he may have got up to 190. You can see he's won a variety of competitions and various awards as well. Well, Player of the Year. Let's have a look to see if any Yugoslavians are featured in this. And then we'll have a look at the league and the clubs to see how they've been getting on. You can see this guy, Willie Naismith, a Scottish guy, has been doing rather well. Yugoslavian, there we go. Enes Pusic at the age of 29, playing for Barcelona, managed to win World Player of the Year. He's retired now, but there we go. Yugoslavian in there. This is the guy, Willie Naismith, that's won multiple World Player of the Year. He's played for Man United, 35 years old now, but still insane technically and mentally. What a player. There's only one Yugoslavian featuring. Ronaldo won World Player of the Year at the age of 36. That's crazy. Messi won it at age 36 as well. So this is the Yugoslavian Premier League. There's a few leagues, as you'll remember from the last episode. You can see Dynamo have been particularly dominant, winning it multiple times. Rekia have also won it. Maribor have won it quite a few times. In fact, there's only been four different teams that have won it. Kukaraki, the other team. A few different runners-up in third place places, but it's 
it's been pretty boring in terms of the winners. It's only four winners. Pretty interesting stuff. Dynamo running away of the last championship. You can see the team's been relegated there. But Dynamo have been particularly successful on this. Three and a half star reputation. Only national reputation though. So perhaps they haven't managed to win a Champions League or anything. If we have a look. Competitions. Euro Cup. That was 1967 though. But they've won eight Yugoslavian Premier Leagues. They've won the, the Cup three times that's the Liga Cup and the Yugoslav Cup they've won four times but European wise they haven't managed to win the Champions League we'll have a look at that in a second this is the winners of the Yugoslav Cup for those of you interested and the Yugoslav Super Cup there Conference Cup so that'd be some of the lower league teams if we just go up that's the Yugoslavian Liga Cup Red Star won the most recent one but let's just go up and see who are the winners of all these other leagues you can see the conference level teams here there's quite a few conferences, as you can see there, who then qualify for the divisions above. Liga 3, you can see. Liga 2. Liga 1. And lastly, the top division. So these are the winners of the Champions League. Unfortunately, I don't think there's any Yugoslavian winners in there. It's been quite a mixture of teams. No one's dominated the Champions League. You can see AS Monaco have won it a couple of times. Bayern Munich. The usual teams you'd expect to be winning it. But I don't think there's any Yugoslavian teams in there. If we just look at the group stage of the most recent Champions League. Dynamo finished bottom of their group. So I don't think they've been particularly successful, the Yugoslavian teams. If you look at the rules here, only one team qualifies for the group stage of the Champions League. And then the other, there's another team, second place qualify for the third best place playoff so most of the time there's only one team going into the Champions League anyway and then there's one team that qualifies for the Euro Cup group stage and two teams qualify for the third qualifying round depending on the Yugoslav Cup. So there's a few teams that get into Europe but none of them have managed to be successful so far and you can see here in the European reputation wise it's down in 13th. It's gone up from 15th. Now, the Super Serbian Super League, you can ignore that because that doesn't actually exist. That's just a mistake on the database, I do believe. They've only actually had two managers. The last guy, Mamic, has been in charge since 2018. 64 now. That's pretty insane. These are the records. You can see Ivan Kanez, the guy we looked at earlier, is the all-time top scorer. And the most capped player is Senad Karic, who is 35, plays for PSG. I assume he's not currently in the team because we didn't see him. But 163 caps for, for Yugoslavia is ridiculous. Don't think they've ever managed to get up to first in the world rankings. The highest they have been is second. And this is the best 11, apparently. Overall best 11 for Yugoslavia. I don't think there's any real-life players in there. Modric isn't in there, I don't think. I might be wrong, but I would say, yeah, most of them are regens. All of them are regens. Oh, there's Kovacic and Lovren and Jedrach as well. So there's a few, but they're on the bench. So there we go. It's just a short update to let you know how Yugoslavia gets on in the future. Now, if you want to download the database, the link is in the description below. You download that and then you put it into your Sports Interactive folder in your documents. There's a folder called Editor Data and you just stick it in there and then you start a new game and make sure you've selected this database and then you can play as a, a Yugoslavian team in the Super League or, man or even manage Yugoslavia it's really up to you so thanks for watching this just a short mini series involving this database like I said those of you that create databases or fancy creating databases or various things on Football Manager let me know about them I'm happy to, to do a, 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 a video or maybe even a series involving your database if I think it's you know a great fun thing to do so just tweet me and I, I, I'll check it out. So thanks for watching, guys. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed the video. I will see you very soon.